So this is a midline approach for Baragel. You can see the needle going in there. It's uh, between the rectum and the prostate, and you're looking for that white line, which is the space that you want to be in. And that's the space uh, that's going to be safest. It's the space that you know is, is not going to be injected into the wall or the rectum. It's right where Denonvier's fascia is, and you just sort of advance the tip of the needle. You can see the needle the whole time. You know where you're going, right to the base of the prostate. And once you're in that space, you can go in an axial view and really make sure you are not in that rectal wall. You can lift up on the needle. You'll see that in a second. There's the tip. You lift up a little bit and then you inject. And you can inject and also get a lot of tactile feedback at this point to make sure there's no resistance. It should go in very smoothly. You shouldn't feel resistance in this spot or else you might think twice about exactly where you are. And then you go back to that sagittal view and you've got a nice pocket of gel right at the base. And then you just sort of pull the needle backwards slowly, keep it sort of at the top part of the gel that you just made inside the gel. And you saw something just kind of open up there. And then you just slowly move backwards. And sometimes you just keep moving backwards all the way and it's just a great space that you've made. Other times you'll find that there's some resistance maybe at the mid part of the prostate, uh, which you'll see here, a little bit of resistance as I'm moving back there. Maybe the gel's not going in quite as easy as it did before. You can feel that the entire time, but you just sort of feel that area. Make sure that if you need to readvance, you're in the gel, which is the safe area. And then you can sort of push upwards on the needle if you need to. And that sort of maneuver will help you uh, open the space up, make sure that you're dissecting it, and make sure that you're opening it up as best as possible so you can place the product. Here's what I was talking about. You see it's, it's scarred there, probably from previous biopsies. It's not too uncommon to see that. But we have all the time that we want to take to open this space up. We can take as much or as little time as we need. A lot of times I find that these, these spacing cases go pretty quick, but sometimes they don't, uh, and, this, and that's, that's okay. And so we go back to the axial view here to check on our symmetry, make sure that we're developing a good space that's covering the prostate and lifting it up equally uh, throughout. And then you find your needle tip and you can sort of identify where you might have a paucity of gel and you might have to go back in there and sort of add some more. And so there's, I tend to switch uh, between the two a lot just to make sure that I'm in a safe area, make sure that I'm, I'm putting the gel in, a, in the best spot possible with the best symmetry. And, and here you can see I'm probably feeling around to make sure that uh, there's not too much resistance. Um, I'm sort of pulling back a little bit on the needle. I'm keeping it high you know, so my hands are low and the needle is high above, uh, uh, above away from the rectum. And I'm just injecting slowly. You can see, you know, the gel is sort of slowly making a new space. Some of it's leaking back to uh, the base and that sometimes happens when they're scarring. Um, on this midline approach, you just sort of check it from the midline uh, as you're injecting and then you go left and right in the sagittal view to make sure the gel is uh, developing a symmetrical space. And if you need to, you can always think about even going in from a, another spot just lateral to your central midline spot to inject gel if there's a lot of resistance in the midline. Uh, and so you have all the flexibility to do that. You can essentially do whatever you need to do to make sure that that space is, is the best it can be. And throughout this, the tip of the needle is visualized. You know you're not injecting into a place you shouldn't. You have the tactile feedback of the syringe and the gel going in, and you can use that needle to sort of develop the space. You see how the, the needle is, is, is being lifted upwards, and, and that helps dissect the plane to, to inject the bear gel. Here I just turned a little bit to the left to, make, to check to see how my symmetry was and we saw there was a little bit of absence of gel so I moved the needle over uh, to that space and then we were able to inject some more in order to improve the symmetry, get better coverage. And we can go back to the axial view to kind of check on that and see where we're at.
again, when, when there is this scar tissue or this, it's not going in as smoothly as, you, as it sometimes does, it's okay. You just have to continue to use the needle, the tip of that needle to develop the space. And you can see that as the needle is kind of moving upwards and downwards in the gel pocket. And here we go back to the axial view where we can see exactly how much symmetry we have. We can see how much space we're developing. We can make sure that all throughout the prostate we have a good uh, space developed that's going to give the patient the best result as far as reducing their, their risk of rectal toxicity. Here we're going back towards the apex to check it out and see exactly what kind of uh, gel we might need to inject there. The tip of the needle is always visualized. You, uh, you constantly know where it is. You know you're being safe. And, and you can also develop with the needle. So when you can see it so well and you can see the gel so well, you can be pretty confident that when you're dissecting, you're just not, you're not doing uh, dissection of a space you shouldn't be in. So I'm moving the needle over, trying to develop that plane to kind of lift that lateral aspect of the prostate up. And a lot of this is intuitive. You know, I, I didn't have a lot of experience. Um, I'd had no experience with transperineal approach, no experience with, with spacing, but you know, just from uh, surgical experience with prostatectomies and, and, and just general urology with prostate needle biopsy, you can, use, you can use that to sort of develop all these spaces using the needle to, to direct where the gel goes. It, 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 I found it to be pretty intuitive, and I think most people would. And the best part about it, like I said, is that you have control throughout the entire process. And you, can, and you can take as much or as little time as you need. Over here, I want to add a little extra gel, so I'm kind of moving that space. I'm feeling what the needle feels like, whether there's resistance there or not. You can, you can sort of move the needle back and forward, and you can see it the whole time, and maybe inject a little bit to see what, what kind of feedback you're getting from the syringe. And here it's, it's scarred a little bit over there, but you sort of move the needle back and then move it back in, in the axial view, little slow steps, kind of like little baby steps moving over there and feeling uh, to, to see what, it, what kind of resistance is there, kind of inject a little bit. You'll see I inject a little bit of gel here and, and it opens it up. You can see it opening up more and more and, and the space is developing in, in, a, in a way that's optimal to ensure uh, decreased toxicity from the radiation therapy they're going to receive. Now we measure it. I, I tend to measure it still just to see. That's 15 millimeters. It's not totally necessary to get that much space, but um, you know, there's good symmetry there. And then measure it from the sagittal view. And I can, I can talk with the radiation oncologist about what kind of space I'm getting. And, 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 and that can be very helpful for them too sometimes. So the procedure is easy to control. You can know where you're going the entire time. You just need to take your time and, and, and develop the space.